G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and in this video we're going to talk about the measures in Salesforce Marketing Cloud and how you can recreate them using data views and SQL in Automation Studio. I'll explain why it's important to recreate measures in SQL for performance reasons and then I'll step through the top 8 system defined measures to show you how you can recreate and customize them for yourself. So in case you haven't used them before, the measures are a simple tool within Marketing Cloud which gives marketers the ability to segment their subscriber data using some key engagement stats. Things like sends, opens, clicks, and unsubscribes. You can use these measures inside of your data filters to create segmentation and suppression lists. And it's a really easy way for marketers to get access to this data using clicks and not code. However, the downside of the measures is that they're built using the filtered data extension methodology. And as a result, they can be quite slow when you run them over large data extensions. For example, if you're trying to find the total unique clicks or opens on a very large data extension such as a million subscribers, that data extension refresh could take a long time to rebuild. Now that can be okay if you're doing this as a nightly batch, but if you're trying to refresh your data extensions using a measure for a really big important send with a million subscribers, it could take a while to refresh and you don't want to be waiting around. So let's talk through how you can recreate these measures using data views and SQL. Now before we get started, there's a few resources that you should have at your disposal. The first one is the data views documentation. I'll put a link to this page in the description below. You can check it out to see all the data views that we'll be using today. There's also a link to my database diagram of all the data views in Marketing Cloud. You can use this to find out all the data types and how they relate to one another as we go through today's exercise. So because we are rebuilding these measures, we are going to require a data extension to put the results in. Now we won't do a complex measure or a complex output for today, we're just going to output the subscriber keys of the subscribers that meet each of the measures conditions. So to start with, I've got my new measures folder, I'm going to create a data extension to put my results in. So I'll make a new standard data extension, I'll call this one results, and I can go next. We're just going to output two values, the subscriber key, making sure of course it's the correct subscriber key format as a primary key, and also a value just in case you want to count how many records we're going to output with the clicks or opens. That value is going to be a number because we will be counting those values. Put it as nullable just in case there are some results that come back with no clicks or opens or otherwise. Just these two fields, subscriber key and value, text and number, and I'll go create. And now that we have our data extension set up, let's jump on into Automation Studio. I've jumped into the Activities tab gone down to SQL Query, and I've made myself a new folder called Measures. We can start to make our SQL activities to replicate the measures in Marketing Cloud. So let's take a look now at our measures. Now these are the system defined measures. They come pre-configured inside Marketing Cloud, and there's eight of them that you get pre-installed. Now you can create your own measures by pressing the Create button, but let's focus on these eight as they will cover most use cases for most marketers. So let's start with the total unique opens last 30 days. Now for this measure, you can see by clicking on it some of the configuration options for it. The measure is using the subscribers data source, it's using the event of the unique open and the count operation, which means that this filter when it runs is going to count how many unique opens occurred for the subscriber. You can see it here that we are using for our condition of last 30 days, it uses the open date is after today minus 30 days. So the event occurred in the last 30 days. Now we can have a look at this data by checking out our data views. So in our data views schema, if you have a quick look here, because we have our subscribers, but we are doing the total unique opens. So we'll jump down to our open tree here. You can see in our data view for open, that there is a field called is unique. Now if this is set to true as a Boolean field, then it was a unique open and that should be counted. We also have the event date. Of course, the event date is when the open event took place. So as long as that event date occurred in the last 30 days, then it should be counted. We can add it to our list. We of course want to match back the event date and it is unique back on subscriber key, matching all the way back onto our subscribers on subscriber key. Okay, so let's have a go at making this measure in SQL. So now let's go and create a new SQL activity. So we'll go create activity and create a new SQL query and go next. We'll go total 
unique opens last 30 days as our SQL query name. And of course, we'll save that into our measures folder and we'll go next. Now we can write our SQL query. So for today, we are gonna be using our data views. Now you can do this on one of your main data extensions like your single customer view, but to make it easy, let's use the subscribers data view to match this data against. Now, because we are going to be matching this into our newly created data extension, the results data extension, we'll just bring in the two fields of the subscriber key and the value. Now we can get those two by going into our data extensions and finding our measures data extension that we created, the results one, there it is. We can drag and drop that straight in and that gives us those two fields for our SQL. So we're gonna be using the subscriber key and the value. So for SQL, we write select to select those two values and where from. Well, to start with, we'll go from, and we'll get that from the subscribers data view. So we go subscribers, that's gonna be our subscriber data view. We can check that out here in our data views documentation, down to subscribers. And of course, it's the underscore subscribers table. Now I am in the enterprise business unit for this one, so I will get back all the correct subscribers. I'm not in HR business unit. So back in our SQL, I'm gonna select subscriber key and value. Now I do have subscriber key from subscribers, but value, that's my own unique field. So we have to calculate that. And to do so, we are creating this measure, of course, using our total unique opens, using that open data. So the open data, I have to now link my subscribers view all the way down here into opens on the open key, the subscriber key for opens. So I'll do that using underscore open matching on subscriber key. Now I wanna do this using a nested query. So I'm gonna say left join to join in that data make a nested query here, selecting, of course, the subscriber key, since I want that value to match back against. I'll also get some more values, but I'll do that later. I'm going to do this from the open data extension, the open data view, and I can check that by going into my data view documentation, go opens, and in fact, it's called underscore open, perfect. So from open. Now we do have some conditions. We do want to use the conditions from our measure, which was it is a event that is unique. It's a unique open. So we can check our documentation. And of course for our open, we have the is unique as a billion. So I'll copy that and back in our SQL we'll say where the is unique is equal to true. It was a unique open event. Great. We also had the uh, open event occurred in the last 30 days. And I can do this using our documentation, the event date. So I'll copy that value, go back into my SQL, and I'll say my SQL statement, and the event date is what? In the last 30 days. We can see the event date is greater than, we can use the SQL function of date add. Now date add, we can use in three ordinals. The first ordinal is what is the value that we are adding? Are we adding minutes, seconds, years? No, we are adding days, so put the word day. How many days are we adding? Well, actually we're going to add negative 30 days to go backwards 30 days from today's date, which is of course get date inside of SQL. So now we're saying where the event date is greater than today minus 30 days. And there we go. That's going to find all of these unique opens where the event occurred in the last 30 days. And that will give us a list of all the subscribers. And of course, because our open table has a record for every single time the subscriber has opened an email, there's gonna be a lot of records. So we do have to group our data back up onto subscriber key. We can do that using the group by function. So I'll write group by, we're gonna group by the subscriber key. Now, of course, we don't just want to know which subscribers who had this unique open in the last three days. We want to know how many opens they generated. So we'll make another field in our statement here I might just format this by picking a tab in. There we are. We want to add the count. How many times did they open? So we can use the count SQL function, just like that. And we'll call this as count. And so now when it groups up all the counted uh, is unique open events in the last three days, we'll get a sum or the count, sorry, of how many times they have opened those emails. So this subquery is gonna have two fields, subscriber key, and count, great. We are then matching that back onto our subscribers table. We want this value to be the count. So we can say that we want this count value to be used here as value. So we count as value. 
And because there are two tables being used, we need to use some aliases. So for subscribers, I'll use the alias of S. And for our subquery here, it's an open, so I use the alias of O. We of course are using a left join, so we do have to join up our two data sets. So O will join on where O.subscriber key is going to be equal to S.subscriber key to match our opens back on two subscribers. And there we are. We now have the O.count matching back on S.subscribers. I can check out my syntax and it's looking pretty good so far. So I'll go next and I'll now save this data as an overwrite back onto my data extensions. So back into my measures data extension to my results as an overwrite and I'll go save. Now one good idea when making SQL activities in Marketing Cloud is to actually create a automation to run your SQL activity inside of. So go back to overview and go automation and this one I'll call measures. I'm going to make this automation my schedule and then drop in my SQL query activity that I can now run. So I'll choose my total opens last 30 days. There it is there. Now I can save this SQL uh, automation just like that and then go run once. By going run once, I'll actually know exactly when this activity starts and exactly when it finishes. So I'll go run once now and jump over to my activities and see if it's started. It's not started just yet. I can refresh it and hopefully shortly the activity will start and I can see by a blue, green or red activity tile if it has started, finished or failed. And there we are. So a second later, the activity started and completed. You can see there that the activity ran in four seconds. So that measure, looking back all those unique opens for 30 days, took just four seconds to run. Now I jump back to my data extensions and I can refresh this folder to see the results. Now because I matched this back on subscribers, I'll get all the subscribers in my subscribers table left joined against their total opens. Go into records now and have a look. I can see all my subscribers and which ones had an open in the last 30 days. I can see that just one record, my test record, has a single email unique open in the last 30 days. Now the cool thing is that because we did this as a count, it means that if I had sent myself more emails during that time, that count would be higher. I could have two, three, 10 or even 100 unique opens during that time. And so I could later on add additional criteria to say I only want customers whose total opens were greater than five. They've had more than five unique opens in the last 30 days. I could also modify this and go back and change it from 30 days to 60 days or 90 days or even more. Bearing in mind that the data views only look back for 180 days. You can't go back further than six months in your data views inside Marketing Cloud. So if you do want to go back further for your engagement data, you may have to extract that and store it somewhere else. Okay, so that's our first measure completed. Let's go back and see what our next one is. That was the total unique opens. Now it's the total unique clicks 30 days. All right. Now both opens and clicks have very similar data view structures. So if I go back and check out my diagram, you can see that my opens and clicks are very, very similar. They both contain the subscriber key, the event date, and the is unique field, which is great for us in recreating this measure in SQL. So I'll pop back now into our SQL. What I can do is I can duplicate this existing activity and reuse most of the same code. So let's copy that activity and call this the total unique clicks. Last 30 days, save it into our measures of course. And we can reuse almost all the same data changing just one thing. We go back into my data view documentation, I have a look for my click data view. You see that the clicks data view is underscore click. So Really, really easily, I can jump back into our automation and change it from open to click, just like that. Now I'll validate that, looking good. We can leave all the rest exactly the same, leave it as 30 days, everything else is just fine, and go next. Of course, overwrite this back to our results data extension, go next, and there we are, activity done. I can now pop back into our automation and I can replace that unique last 30 days of opens and I can replace that with our clicks instead. There's our clicks and I can go save and then run once. This will overwrite the existing results data extension with the results of our total unique clicks last 30 days. Choose the activity and run. And we can see now that the activity is running. So it's still, it's complete. I can go refresh 
There we go, completed. Now the average run time is 11 seconds. So chances are that one there took about 15 or so seconds to run. I can go back to my results and check out what my new results are. Going back into measures, refreshing. And there's my results done extension. Previously we had one record that just had the one total. And again, it's the same record because it's my test record. And I went back in and I clicked an email. So I've also got one unique click in the last 30 days. All right, let's have a look at our next measure. So for our third one, it is total marketing sends. And the fourth one there is total transactional sends last 30 days. These are a bit different. We're using a different data view for this one. You can see that we are still using this sent uh, data view for these ones. We have a send type classification is marketing, the marketing sends. And for the transactional sends, I'm sure we'll see just the opposite where it's operational send type. All right. So we do have to use the sent data view. But to understand which same classification type was used, you have to use the job data view. So if we go back into our data view viewer here. We can have a look and of course our subscribers view. We'll link down into our sends to see which sends took place. We can then use the job ID in the send to look back into the jobs data extension here. And inside of the job data view, we'll look down here for the send classification type. Now send classification type is what was used in the send classification when the email was sent. Now unlike in the uh, measures that have been used here, we have marketing and operational. The actual values are the same ones that you'll find in your send classification setup. I tested this by making my own marketing send. I use the send classification type of commercial. So you will find that the values that you see inside of that data view will be default commercial and default transactional, not marketing and operational. With that in mind, let's now go back and try and find out if we can select all the subscribers that have received a send where the send classification type was either the marketing, the default commercial, or the operational, which was the default transactional. So back now in Automation Studio, let's go and create our new SQL activity. Go SQL query and next. We're going to create our total marketing sends last 30 days. Of course, saving that into our measures and next. Okay, so to do this activity, we are going to need to have a look at that documentation again. So we're going to use the send classification type will be equal to the default commercial. So have a look at our job documentation for the job data view. We want to use the send classification type, there it is there, will be equal to default commercial. So let's put that into our query quickly. It's going to be a where statement. So we have where that send classification type is going to be equal to, and it was default commercial send. So copy that value, default commercial send. Make sure we have a copy of that in our code. We also want where it occurred in the last 30 days. So that send activity was in the last 30 days which means we are going to need to use the sent data view. So go data views for sent. And of course it'll be underscore sent. So I'll copy that in. And where the data event, we have a look at the event date, there it is there, will be that job date from before, the add date, or date add, negative 30 days. So we could be going from that sent data view. We could be saying where the event date is greater than date add, using days negative 30 from the get date just like that there we are now of course as before we are going to be using the values from our result data extension so I'll get our result data extension values again just like that we'll go select subscriber key and the value from and just like before we'll use the subscribers and we'll call it S for short. We're going to left join to get all the values from our next subquery, which will be some of our views we've got here. Let's bring those up. We're going to say that we need to select some data. So we'll say select. We're going to need our subscriber key again, of course. We have to refer back to that. And let's do the count again, because we are counting how many times they were sent. We do have here the operation of count. So we'll go back into our query. We're going to write count as the count. Now we're doing this from the sent because we are counting how many sends took place. We then want to uh, inner join that activity onto the job table, underscore job. Now the job table we're going to be joining, of course sent we can call S, job we can call J. 
on j dot job id because we are using the job id to match back our email to our job so we'll go with a job id is equal to the send job id so that we have have a link and check back on our data view here we're linking back from our send activity job id back to our job now we can select the rest of this data so let's now have a quick look back in our query we're going to use the event date from the send so it's the sent so s for event date was in the last 30 days and so we're going to change that where to an and and where the job j dot send classification type is default commercial so of course this is our marketing selection now I'll just quickly clean up my formatting just like that and of course we've got this sub query here selecting all the correct sends and counting them because it's a count we have to do the group by so go group by group by and of course grouping by the subscriber key we have to call this subquery something to join back on subscribers so I'll call this one a we're going to left join a on a dot subscriber key to match back on subscribers will be equal to the subscribers value of s dot subscribers all right there we are now to get the value of course we have to look up our count value which we have called a dot count so it's going to be a dot count is equal to value all right let's check out our syntax not that good so far we've missed one quick thing here incorrect syntax near the equals sign so we've got that one there oops not equals <laughs> as there it is and of course a ambiguous column name we do want the subscribers subscriber key so it's going to be s dot subscriber key check that again and looking good so 30 days we're going to find how many default commercial or marketing sends took place count them up and match it back against our subscribers table perfect we'll go next and of course as before we're going to choose our measures result overriding our previous results next and save with our third SQL measure complete, we'll jump back into our automation. Let's now replace that activity one more time, choosing our marketing sends, saving the automation, and we'll go run. And run. Perfect, there we are. Okay, we've refreshed the activity, and the activity is now complete, so I'll jump back into our data extensions. And let's see how many marketing sends each record has been sent. Go back into our results and refresh our records. Now, yet again, I've only done a few tests to these records, so I expect to see a very similar result, which is my only test record having received one marketing send. What I might do, just to make sure that we do see more data, I'll clean this off for our next measure. So what I might do is I'll skip through the next few measures. As you can probably tell, it's quite easy to modify these conditions between marketing and transactional, between unique opens and clicks. So we'll jump down now. It's a very similar activity for the bounces and unsubscribes. You can, of course, look up on your sends and opens, looking back onto the unsubscribe activity table or looking up onto the bounce activity table. Again, you can see the job ID and subscriber key and the event date on bounce. And similarly for the unsubscribes, you can find the job ID, the event date and the subscriber key to match back onto subscribers. Let's instead look at something that's a bit more interesting which is the total emails not opened last 30 days. This is a really useful measure in case you want to try and find out which subscribers are disengaging with your communications. So let's now recreate the total emails not opened last 30 days. So I'm back over in Automation Studio. We'll go create activity and create ourselves that new SQL activity with the total emails not opened last 30. Saving to our measures and we'll go next. So let's have a quick look now at the criteria for our not opened last 30 days. In this case, we're using the event source of not opened. Now, curiously, there is no data view called not opened. We have opened, but not a not opened. So we have to use the reverse of opened somehow. We are doing a count on subscribers, where of course the send date is after today minus 30 or last 30 days. So in order to find out which emails were sent but not opened, we can use our data views. So we can say on subscribers, let's find all of the sends that took place. 
Let's pretend that I've got a subscriber key that was sent 10 emails, which means I'll have 10 unique job IDs for my subscriber key in this table. Now, if I use the job ID and subscriber key to look up the open table, I can find out which emails I then opened because my subscriber key and job ID will match on the send job ID and subscriber key. Now I should have the event date or a record to show that an open took place. So if I look back from my subscriber into my sends and I find 10 sends, but when I then join back onto the open table, there's no open events, but it means that zero of those 10 sends were opened. Therefore, the not opened condition is met. Now, as we go through and build this, also think about how you could modify this code to look up from the sends against the clicks. Which emails were sent and not clicked on? Which emails were sent and not unsubscribed? Or which emails were sent and not bounced? You could use exactly the same code that we're about to program for the opens table to look up a different table to receive a slightly different list. But for now, let's go and rebuild our emails not opened last 30 days. So back into Automation Studio in our query, we are going to select as before. We're going to select, of course, our records from our results data extension, subscriber key and value, just like that, from subscribers as S, you know the story. We're then going to left join and make ourselves that nested query. We'll call this one A, because we're going to be matching A on A.subscriber key will be equal to S.subscriber key. And what do we need inside of our nested query here? Well, we do have to look up on the sends and then look up on the opens to find the sends that were not opened. So we will be looking up from the underscore send table. We'll also be left joining that further onto the open table. And we'll call this one S and O for short. On O dot subscriber key will be equal to S dot subscriber key, but also we'll be doing a lookup on the job IDs. So in our nested query here, we are going to be looking up some data. So we go select, we want the subscriber key value, and of course we'll be counting again as count from sends. We want to be doing the subscriber key and job ID because we don't just want to look up which uh, or how many opens your subscriber key has, it's how many emails, which means you have to match on both the subscriber key and the job ID. So to get job ID, we'll say subscriber key and o.job ID is equal to s.job ID. All right. Now, as before, we do want to have some conditions in here. So where the event date, now which event date are we using for the criteria? It's the send date. So our send date will be our send event date. So check our data view. We want our event date where our s for send, so s.event date is greater than date add. That's going to be in days, negative 30 from today, get date. All right, any other conditions to build inside of our set here? Now it was not opened. Currently our current code is looking for opens. We want not opened. So we have to do one more thing. Because we are trying to left join, we're trying to look up from our sends into our opens, we want to know where there's nothing found. When could we not find an open record for the given job ID and subscriber key? Well, we can do that by saying, and the open dot subscriber key, my subscriber key value could not be found. So it is null. We could not find my open subscriber key when matching on email and subscriber key. Now, of course, as before, we are doing a count. So we'll do the group by function, grouping by the subscriber key. Of course, subscriber key here being the sent subscriber key. So we've got S dot subscriber key and S dot. And of course, for our main view here on subscribers, we have to use the subscribers.subscriber key. And we are looking up our a.count as before, table a.count as value. Perfect. So one more read through. We are selecting our subscriber key from subscribers and the count of this section here, the subscribers where their event date, 
the send event date was in the last 30 days, and we could not find an open for them when matching on the open table using the job ID and subscriber key. All right, let's check that out. Looking good for our syntax. We'll then go next and we'll upsert that data as before into our data extensions. There we go. And of course, for good measure, we'll also go back into our automation and replace our automation activity here with our new SQL. Save the automation and run the one activity. Now, hopefully, even though this is a rather complex piece of SQL, it's still going to run pretty fast. So unlike our measures, which have to use the data filter methodology, these SQL activities are much, much faster to run. So I'll go back into my activity now. I've got those three, and hopefully shortly, I'll see that fourth one come through. And there we are. Just a second later, we've got our fourth one running right now. And it's still running. You can refresh it and check. It's now completed. So each of these four activities we've built so far, the average runtime was 10 seconds apiece. That's really fast compared to those data filter measures. So we'll go back into our data extensions. Now I did clear this off to make sure we can see our new results. So I'll refresh that data. Good, there's 14 records there. So we'll jump in and have a look. And what do we have? Any emails not opened? Well, none. Because remember that my test record that I had been setting things to earlier, I have been clicking and opening my emails. So none of my subscribers that have been sent to in the last 30 days have not opened an email they've been sent. Fantastic. So I hope you can see that all the measures that come predefined inside of your marketing cloud can really easily be rebuilt using your data views and SQL. You can also get much more complex. So even though some of the rules that have been pre-built are pretty easy to understand, you can go make your own very, very custom rules just by using the documentation for your data views. And if you need to, this reference document as well to understand how they all relate back. For example, you could do things like looking for subscribers that have not opened a journey email by matching up the subscriber onto a send using the send trigger definition ID to see if it relates to a journey or not. All right, and I hope you found this introduction of how to recreate your measures in SQL using data views useful for today. If you have, please let me know in the comments below and give the video a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.